Hey friends, welcome to a new video. Today we are tackling another question from the most frequently asked questions pile, and that is why is it taking me so long to find clients? Before we dive in here, I want to just give a quick disclaimer um, that there is some kind of roofing or gutter work something happening right behind the camera which is right outside my window uh, at the studio so there are going to be some noises uh, i thought about not recording today but this is the window of time that we have so i apologize if there's hammering and loud noises we'll try to get as much of it uh, out as we can in the editing but um, that is the situation today so um circling back to our question why is it taking me so long to get clients um, embedded in that question are many very specific questions that you all have sent me over the years that detail your um, unique and concrete life circumstances and all the things that you've done um, to, to try to figure out how to get clients. I decided rather than reading all those uh, individually to distill them down into this one question because even though those circumstances are unique and they do, they are absolutely relevant, um, I think that the kind of most um, the most crucial, the most fundamental underlying part of that question that is common whenever I get it in any form that it comes in is, why is this taking so long, i.e., am I doing something wrong or should I give up? So um, yeah, they, they, they all are very different. They all have different circumstances. I have read every single one of your questions on this topic and I hear you and this video is for you. If you wrote me a question about this, this video is for you. Um, and the other reason I decided to put them all in one and to distill them all into that same question is that I would reply in a very similar, pretty much identical way to every single one of those questions, which is to say that I would first ask you some other questions. Um, so we're going to do that right now. So my first question for anybody who wonders why it's taking so long for them to find clients is have you been making art for more than a year or less than a year? So if you've been making art for less than a year, it's probably best in my opinion to focus on making art and not getting clients. So if you're having a hard time doing that, if that's a struggle for you, whether you know for reasons of motivation um, or you're, you're feeling like your skills aren't quite where you want them to be, uh, I would recommend that you go back and watch um, my last video, which is why is it taking so long um, learning to draw edition. <laughs> so go back uh, and watch that if you're if you're struggling. Um, and the reason I suggest that you should focus on making art rather than on getting clients if you've been drawing for less than a year, um, actually it's, it's two main reasons. And the first is that you really need to have a consistent body of work in order to land clients, in order to get client work. And in order to have a consistent body of work, you need to have a consistent output, meaning that the work that you make needs to, um, you need to be able to have some sense when you start out making something of what it will look like in the end. So if you're still in that phase where, you know, things can look really different from piece to piece, you know, there's a pretty different style. Some of your work might look like it was made by different people. That's not to say that you can't have more than one style. You can, we could have a whole other video about that. But if, if you're kind of in those earlier phases, it's, it's kind of hard to predict exactly what your output is gonna be. And there can be a, a pretty large amount of variability in terms of like the quality and the look and the style of the finished pieces that you're making. So um, you really need that consistent body of work. To have the consistent body of, of work, you need to have um, a consistent output. And to have that consistent output, your skills really need to be at a certain level and you need to have been doing it for long enough to have that consistency. So um, that's reason number one why I think you should focus on making art in the first year uh, rather than focus on finding clients. Reason number two, this one is a little bit more subjective, but I'll go ahead and put it out there anyway. Um, I think that focusing on the money part too early can make it hard for you to tell what part of the process you're enjoying. And um, that's because we all live in a capitalist world and we need money to live. We need money to pay our rent and to buy food and to support ourselves. So um, I'm not meaning to minimize that at all or say that money isn't important or that if you make a living as an artist that you shouldn't care about money. That is not the message here. However, when you focus on the money part really early on, before you have settled your style, before you've figured out like what you really love about this, it is gonna be kind of hard for you to get in touch with that, or it's gonna be harder for you to get in touch with that. And um, if you watch the last video, 
about um, why it's taking so long to learn to draw, um, you'll know how important I think that element of enjoyment is. If you're going to put all of the effort and the blood and the sweat and the tears and all of the hard work that it takes into being able to actually make a living as a, an illustrator, an artist, a creative person of any kind, honestly, if you're going to put all of that work in, you want to actually enjoy what you're doing. You don't want to wake up in five years or 10 years and find out like, oh, I've worked so hard to get here and now I'm doing this and I actually really don't like this thing that I'm doing. Yes, maybe I'm, I'm you know, making children's book illustration, but I actually really don't like the process of children's book illustration. Maybe what I really wanted to do was pattern design, you know, and, and that's just like a random hypothetical. But um, if you get too zeroed in too quickly on, you know, how can I use this to make money, it, it can make it harder to get in touch with like, am I actually enjoying this process? So um, that's, that's the other reason that I suggest in the early uh, months <laughs> in the early phase of a creative career or when you're starting to think maybe I want to do this for a living if you've been in that place for less than a year focus on um, focus on the art making first rather than on finding clients now I do one quick caveat on this that is not to say that you should turn down paying work so if you've been doing this for four months five months seven months whatever and a client shows up and wants to pay you to make something take it that's great that's fine um, this is more about whether you should be like really specifically putting a lot of effort and time into trying to monetize whatever it is that you do. So whether you, or even like just trying to put it into a niche, trying to uh, box it in too early. So um, if the if the paying work shows up by all means, and it's something you want to do, by all means, take it. But um, in those early phases, I wouldn't spend time on like specifically trying to make your work fit into a niche or to uh, monetize it. Okay, so now what about if you have actually been drawing or painting or whatever art making you do? What about if you have actually been doing that for longer than a year? Um, so my first question in this case would be, do you you have this isn't gonna be a surprise but do you have a defined and consistent style so if yes that's wonderful great congratulations um, if no if you don't have a defined and consistent style I would say you should spend some time working on that first so spend your time drawing and painting again watch that video that I've mentioned um, if you're struggling with that especially if you're um, having a hard time with motivation and uh, a side note here if you have been drawing for more than a year or, or more than two years or five years, <laughs> if you've been drawing for some specific length of time and you still don't have um, a consistent style, that also is not a signal that you should give up or that there's something wrong with you or that you're doing something wrong. Sometimes it takes longer. It can take longer depending on how um, long you have, how much time you have to give it in any given day or any given week, whether you have big chunks of time where you're not drawing or painting. Um, there are all kinds of reasons why it can take longer for certain people. And just because you're looking back and saying, wow, I've been doing this for a while and I'm still not where I, I want to be, that is not a reason to give up or, or a sign that you're doing something terribly wrong or that there's something wrong with you. Um, it's just a fact of life that for some people it does take longer. So um, next question, if you do have a defined style, uh, are you sharing that? Are you sharing that style? Are you sharing your work online regularly? Um, if yes, that's great. <laughs> and if no, um, where can you share? What can you share? What kind of platform makes the most sense for you? Um, this is not gonna be a, a big old video about social Social media or social media for artists there are plenty of wonderful videos about that plenty of great classes about that as well um uh, Andy from Creative Pep Talk, Andy J Pizza, he has put out a class on social media that's on Skillshare that's excellent if you want to get into that. Um, that's uh, all about social media for artists and creatives. But it is necessary if you want to make a living in this field, in this industry, in this world, it's necessary for most of us. Now, of course, there are the exceptions, but this video is not for the exceptions. This video is for all of us. <laughs> this video is for the regular people who have to do it the regular way and the regular way for for most of us is to have some kind of an online presence so that is something that's needed um so think about what social media platform you want to be on where you want to first put your artwork i would say if you are not anywhere online um yet if you haven't been putting your work online yet uh, don't feel like you have to do it all at once. Pick one at a time, focus on focus on one, get going there, and then think about whether it makes sense to add another one on. Otherwise it can be super overwhelming because there are so many different ones. 
Um, all right, and related to this question is, do you have a website? And I would say pretty much the same thing that I just said about social media. Yes, there are the exceptions. There are some people that can do this without really having much of a website or, or maybe they have one, but they don't update it very often. Um, but for most of us, it is really important to have that online presence because that's how we get found. And you know, maybe you're not um, wanting to work in an industry where you have an art director, maybe you're wanting to do more retail stuff, um, even then it's going to be a lot easier because you can connect more with your audience, with the audience that actually really wants and understands and connects with your work if you are online. So um, basically you got to be on social media, you got to you got to have a website of some kind if you're wanting to do this professionally. If you're doing this for fun, if you're just wanting to get used to, um, if you're just wanting to build up your art skills and make good work and you don't really want to monetize it or make a living about it then or make a living with it then it's optional and you're honestly probably not even watching this video anyway because this video is about <laughs> answering the question of why it's taking so long to find clients so um next question is a little bit more ambiguous so if you are doing those things if you are on social media if you do have a website are you presenting yourself professionally on that website or on social media um, now how can you tell if you're presenting yourself professionally <laughs> A few good things to look for. Number one, if you're on social media, let's say Instagram, that's a big one that a lot of us are on. If you're on Instagram and you're wanting to do this professionally, you're wanting to make a living as an illustrator and your profile is set to private, that's not gonna work. <laughs> so again, there are exceptions, but for most of us, you really need to have your profile set to public if you want people to be able to find you. Another thing that you can look for, this would be both on social media and on a website, is that the artwork is presented in a scan rather than a photo. Now, of course, if you're making digital work, that is, irrelevant <laughs> and maybe if you're trying to do fine art and show it at galleries or sell paintings or sell like commissions to private individuals then maybe a photo would be okay but it has to be a really good photo um, but for most people whether you're doing children's book whether you're doing pattern whether you're doing commercial illustration editorial any particular industry in commercial art you really need to show your work in a scan and that's not just because it looks a little bit better in a scan when you show your work in a scan it says I know how to scan my work I know how to digitize my work especially important if you're a traditional media artist because even if you're making stuff with paper and paint and pencils like I am, you have to be able to get it onto a computer because that's the intermediary between you and wherever that artwork ultimately ends up. So um, is your profile public? Are you showing your work in um, hopefully in scans or at least like very, very good photos? And then the last thing, um, and th these are just very basic ones, but the last thing would be, do you have a clear contact information? So a way that somebody could contact you that helps make it clear, yes, I am actually wanting to be hired to do this. Here's the way to contact me if, if you want to. So by doing some of these things, you can send a clear signal that you are wanting to do this professionally, that you are a professional, that you're available for hire, and that you're not, you know, somebody who's doing this for fun or as a hobby. And that is not at all to diminish hobbyists. I think it is that's wonderful <laughs> if that is what you're doing. Um, but if you if you're not doing that, if you want to make it clear that you're you're that you want to be hired, that you're doing this as a professional, you need to send those signals that you're presenting yourself professionally online. All right, next question is, have you identified your market and niche? So um, uh, we could have a whole big long video about this too. And there are many people who explain this better than I do, but a very basic description here, um, industry, market, and niche. Industry would be uh, like whatever the, the broader, the biggest, Hmm, let's think about this actually. I haven't thought about my analogy beforehand, which is not a good idea. Okay, uh, <laughs> your industry is whatever country you're in. And so for us, the industry, for, for me, the industry would be commercial illustration or commercial art probably. And um, that's the that's the US or whatever. <laughs> and then my state, you know, I'm in Pennsylvania right now. So zeroing into my market, the I'm in the industry of commercial art and illustration and the market I'm in, I'm in a few different markets actually. I'm in both editorial and I'm in kind of commercial packaging and advertising. And then drilling down even further to my niche, I'm in the niche of kind of realistic uh, traditional media. So I'm in like realistic traditional illustration within the market of editorial and packaging, markets of editorial and packaging in the industry of commercial art and illustration. So um, if you have been around the block a few times, you've probably heard that description, that explanation, but um, just wanted to put it out there for anybody who's unfamiliar with it. 
And uh, a lot of us will have a kind of broad idea of what the industry is. That seems pretty self-explanatory just to say like, oh yeah, I want to do fine art or I want to do commercial art or whatever, or animation. Um, but you do kind of have to zero in on something more specific as you're making the transition from those initial early days where you're really focusing on making your work. Um, if you want to make a living, at some point you are going to have to figure out how it fits into a market, how it serves a purpose, how it fulfills a need that somebody else has, whether it's, you know, buying a print for their home or going on um, a billboard on the side of a train or subway or whatever. So um, you're, you're going to have to walk through that process at some point. Now, I think that it's best to let this process grow organically out of your natural style and the process that you enjoy engaging in, which is why, you know, a little bit ago I was saying, if you haven't been drawing for a long time, I think that it can be challenging to focus too early on this kind of thing, to focus too early on industry market niche, um, because you don't, you, you might slot yourself into a niche or into a market rather that um, seems like it could be a good fit or that you hypothetically think you would enjoy. But if you haven't actually spent a lot of time there and making the kind of work that fits in that um, market and niche, then you'll, once you do it, you can realize, oh gosh, I actually don't want to do this. And I've spent all this time, you know, building up these connections and making a portfolio. I'm putting myself out there in that way, but I, I don't enjoy this process at all. So that's why I think it's so crucial crucial to first focus on the process that you enjoy doing, the way that you actually like spending your time, the kind of art that you, you know, genuinely want to make. Um, and then once you've done that for a while, you can kind of take a step back and say, um, okay, where do I see work that is similar to this being used? This is another thing we could have a whole video about. And I, I've talked about it in other videos as well, like how to actually match the kind of work that you're making to an existing industry market and niche. And if you have established your style, the process, the things that you actually enjoy doing, um, then you know that you're going to be in a good position to keep doing that into the future because it's based on what you actually enjoy, what you actually want to do, how you actually want to spend your time. So um, that's not to say that you're not going to have to adjust things a little bit. So when I um, was first painting food, you know, I was painting food for about a year before I got um, any sort of a client commission. And um, that was not something that I sought out. Like they just came to me. And um, at the time, I didn't even realize that you could do this for a living, that people did make a living in the creative industry. It was just yeah, it wasn't on my radar screen. Commercial illustration was nowhere on my radar screen. The only thing I thought about was gallery and uh, gallery representation. So um, once I did realize that was possible, then I kind of had to retool a little bit. And I started looking at magazines and saying, okay, look at how they're using food illustration or, you know, this is the kind of subject that they tend to include or um, the type of angle that they show things from. So I did have to make some small adjustments to kind of make it clear that my portfolio was a fit for that industry. Um, but it, it ultimately came out of what I enjoyed doing at the time and the process that I enjoyed engaging in. So let me know if that is something that you want to hear more about. If you want a video specifically on identifying your industry market and niche, and um, we are going to move on to the next question, which is kind of related. And uh, if you have developed, uh, if you have identified rather that industry market and niche, have you built up a substantial body of work, a, a significant portfolio, a large portfolio? And and if yes, does that portfolio feature a wide variety of subjects that connects to that industry market and niche presented in a way that would make sense? Um, this is often a sticking point. I find this is actually like one of the more common places I find that people get stuck once when they've reached out to me. You know, I look at their stuff and they're presenting it in a good way. They're presenting themselves professionally. Um, they, they do seem like they have a fit with a particular industry market and niche. Um, define style, all of that. But um, when I actually drill down like this, a lot of people who want to do food illustration reach out to me because I do so much food illustration and I see, okay, they've made like six or seven food illustrations and that is just not enough. So uh, you will have to, even if you want to do this professionally, especially if you want to do this professionally, you have to be willing and able and ready to make a lot of self-initiated work that you're not going to get paid for, that you're just making hopefully because you enjoy that process that actually um, fills out your portfolio. So it, it, it could even be 
that you're having to draw the same subject multiple different times. I think I've talked about this example before, but you know, one of the earlier things, one of my first um, assignments was a packaging illustration for a pretzel. And by that point, I had already drawn similar subjects, not, not all the food illustrations I had drawn. I had drawn dozens of maybe even close to 100 food illustrations. Um, but I had drawn things that were similar subjects, like I had drawn a couple of pretzels and several other different bread items. I think I had like seven or eight of those. So um, that <laughs> should give you a sense of how much you're talking about. And a lot of people will get to this point and they'll think, well, I did all these things. I did all these, all these things right. And they did. And they're still not finding clients. And it's just because clients need to see more. They need to see a bigger portfolio. They need to see a wider range. Just because you have painted bread one time, maybe the client wants to have like a, a different kind of bread than you've painted. And it's hard for them to envision the kind of bread that you could paint if you haven't painted that kind of bread before. So uh, just imagine like how hard it is, like if you've ever gone looking for an apartment or a house or whatever, and you find yourself like sitting in a situation where the place, like it doesn't look how you'd want it to look. Um, it is hard for most of us, even for really visual imaginative people like, like me, uh, and I'm imagining you if you're watching this video, um, it's hard for us to conceptualize how that could be different. Um, and to get past that initial like um, gap between what we see and what we want. So maybe you drew white bread, but your client wants a cinnamon roll. Like that's a pretty big gap. So you can say, yes, I drew bread, but you haven't drawn a cinnamon roll yet. So think about how you can have like a variety. And if you're you know wanting to do portraits, make sure you're drawing you know, um, men and women and non-binary people and people of all different um, backgrounds and uh, ha having a really good range showing how you can draw all different kinds of people. Otherwise, you probably will just get picked up to draw the kind of person that you usually draw. Um, so yes, building out that substantial body of work, that's kind of the, um, the cherry on top and the way, the last thing to do if you have been doing this for more than a year and you've done all these other things that you've talked about, still not finding clients, that'd be the last thing. Um, all right. Now I am assuming there would still be those of you who are watching this, who have said yes to every single question that I've answered, even to that, or every single question that I've asked, even to that last question of whether or not they have um, built up a substantial body of work. And um, if that's you and you're saying, well, I've done all that and I still have no clients, you know, what's going on? Why don't I have any clients? I have two guesses of what may be happening. My first guess in this situation is something that I have seen happen at times is that the portfolio that you've built up doesn't actually match the niche that you're aiming for really well. Um, so a second set of eyes can be helpful here. I've talked about this before, but find somebody who is, you know, kind of in a similar position to you, probably um, ideally in a similar stage. Their, you know, their skill level is pretty well developed. They've got their style developed, but they're still like kind of at those early phases of finding clients and ask them if you can trade, if you can look at their portfolio and they can look at your portfolio um, and give some feedback on it and make sure that you are actually aiming at the target that you're intending to aim at. And that the second guess here, I, I feel like I basically already covered this with what I've said, is that the body of work is just not large enough and that you need to make more pieces or you need to make, you know, the same subjects over again. You know, maybe you have drawn a a few cats, maybe you've drawn three cats, but you need to actually draw 10 cats if you wanna be doing pet portraits or whatever. Uh, so uh, first guess is that you're not quite aiming at the target that you think that you're aiming at, try to get some help um, and, and identifying that and uh, fixing it, re-aiming yourself if necessary or changing your portfolio or maybe even changing the target. Um, and then the second guess is that that body of work, you're aiming at the right target, you're doing all the right things, but you just need to do more of it. Um, last thing to mention here, uh, and I, I couldn't figure out a way to, to fit this into any of the things that we've covered so far, but the last thing to mention here is a question that's come up several times, and that is, is my niche too specific? Have I aimed at a, a target that's too small? So, um, my answer to this generally is probably not like even when people have named their very specific niches um if they've you know written me a dm or email me or whatever i have yet to hear one where i'm like wow that's too specific there's probably like not anybody any money to be made there or any way to make a living with that um i think probably the likelier scenario if you have a very specific niche is that you haven't yet really figured out how to monetize it or um, what makes the most sense for that niche. So, you know, if your pet portraits is a good example, actually, like, so say if you're drawing pet portraits and you're, you know, wanting to do that 
commercially. There are, like I do draw um, animals sometimes, especially for editorial, um, but it's not like a huge part of what I do and it's not something that there's like a ton of demand for. Maybe if you've been trying to paint animals and you've also really been aiming at, you know, doing editorial, um, that, that might not be a great fit. You might want to be aiming more at doing pet portraits or maybe even depending on the kinds of animals that you draw, your style, children's books, um, maybe something more with like commercial surface pattern or whatever. But um, thinking about uh, not just is the niche too specific because realistically with the internet and the way that we can kind of group together and gather around our interests, there are, anytime you think you're interested in something that nobody else is interested in, well, at least for me, anytime that's happened, that's not true. There's plenty of people that are like really interested in very specific, whatever um, niche topics. So there is an audience. It just may not always be super clear initially how that audience, how to best serve that audience in terms of like providing something that they want, whether it's, you know, um, uh, illustration in a magazine or on a book, or, you know, maybe that's more an audience that you could do um, more like products or selling prints, more retail stuff. So thinking about how to position yourself in the niche so that you can actually like make a living there is probably the better question as opposed to saying like, is this too specific? All right, so we are wrapping up this video here. Um, I'm aware as I'm finishing this that we haven't talked about things that you can proactively do to, to attract clients. If you've done all the things that we've talked about in this video and, uh, and you are in that place where you're wanting to do some other proactive stuff to, uh, to potentially find clients, to reach out to clients, to work with clients, um, let me know. We can make a video about that um, as well. Um, but the point of this video really was why is it taking so long to find clients um, and implicit in that, am I doing something wrong? Should I change course, turn back? give up, etc. So hopefully you're getting that the answer to should you give up is a resounding no. Um, for me, I'm, I'm always going to say no, you shouldn't give up. Um, now you may have to do some other things. You may have to um, get a day job or take, take on some work that's not exactly the type of work that you want to do. I did a lot of that in the beginning. Um, so it's not to say that you should just be totally impractical and ignore those things. You, you need to obviously do what you need to do to live your life and to support yourself and your family. Um, but uh, to me, giving up is never the answer. So I, I hope there were some very um, concrete and specific things that you feel like you got from this video that you can, um, actionable steps, things that you can work on, um, ways to Im improve your own practice and get yourself ready to work with clients. Um, but if you're still looking for something beyond that, if you've done all those things and you want to talk about, okay, you know, what next, how can I actually, you know, spend a little bit of my time, a little bit of my art time being proactive and actually seeking clients out, um, let me know and we can make a video about that. So don't give up. If this is taking a long time that's normal I will stand on a mountaintop and shout that that's the hill I would die on um, it takes time and uh, yeah and, and giving up is not the answer so um, thank you for watching this video I hope it was helpful hope you enjoyed it and um, let me know in the comments if you did give it a thumbs up if you did and um, I forgot to thank my patrons at the beginning and also in the last video but thank you patrons for supporting this video for supporting this channel um, for making it possible for me to make this work and um, I appreciate you. All right. I uh, hope everybody has a great week, great day, great month, whenever you're watching this video and I will talk to you soon. Bye.